Hello everyone, what's up mga kamangs? Welcome to our YouTube channel. For today's video, we will going to discuss the variables in research. So we have here Practical Research 2, Quarter 1, Mojo 1, Part 4. So at the end of this lesson, you will be able to differentiate or differentiate the kinds of variables and their uses. Let's start. In research, a variable refers to a characteristic that has two or more mutually exclusive values or properties, such as sex has two properties. We have boy and girl. The ages of different person have different values, so with their size, height, weight, and income. The phenomenon of variety is which or what makes a life intensity. So it is one of the motivating factors of the research undertaking. So we have here the two types of variables, the continuous variables and the discrete variables. So let's start first with the continuous variables. Continuous variables are variables that can take infinite numbers on a value that can occur within the population. Its values can be divided into fractions. Example, we have here the types of value. Variable includes age, height, and temperature. Continuous variables often use in quantitative data. There are two types of quantitative or continuous variables, the interval variables and the ratio variables. So we have here interval variables. Interval variables, it has a value that lies along an even dispersed range of number. It is measurement where the difference between two values does have meaning. So if example, we have here the CGPA, the temperature, and the time. So in interval, difference between measurement but no true value or true zero. For the ratio variable, it has a values that lie along an even dispersed range of numbers when there is absolute zero. It possesses the properties of interval variables and has clearly definition of zero indication that there is none of that variable so example we have here the height weight and distance difference between measurement the true value of zero exists so now we have here the discrete variables this is also known as the categorical or classificatory variable this is any variable that has limited number of distinct values and which cannot be divided into fractions for example sex blood group and number of children in the family so discrete variables often use in a qualitative data there are two types of discrete variables the nominal variables and the ordinal variables so let's start first with the nominal variables nominal variable it represents categories that cannot be ordered in any particular way it is a variable with no quantitative value. It has two or more categories but does not imply ordering of cases, such as eye color, we have religion, and we have gender. So these are the examples of the nominal variables. How about the ordinal variables? Ordinal variables, it represents categories that can be ordered from greatest to smallest or vice versa. These variables have two or more categories which can be ranked. For example, we have here the educational level. We have nursery school, kindergarten, elementary school, junior high school, senior high school, and university or college. And we have also the president of the Philippines. Started with Andres Bonifacio, Emilio Aguinaldo, Manuel Rojas, and so on and so forth. So these are the example of the order, the ordinal, var, ordinal variables. So as you can see, quantitative data is more on ratio data and interval data, while qualitative data is more on ordinal data and nominal data. Nominal data categories, we have here no ordinal or ordering or direction, where the ordinal data, ordered categories, just as ranking, order, or scaling. For interval data, we have the difference between measurement but no true zero, while the ratio data, difference between measurement, has true zero exist. So let's proceed to the kinds of variables. So let's start first with the independent variables. 
independent variables those that probably cause influence or affecting outcomes they are invariably called treatment manipulated antecedent or predictory variables this is the cost variable or the one responsible for the conditioning that act or something else to bring about changes independent variable can also called as the input variables so for example a study is on the relationship of study habits and academic performance of ICNHS senior high school students. So the study habit is the independent variable because it influences the outcome or the performance of the students. We have also here another example for experimental research design, which is the sunlight effect plant growth. As you can see, the independent variable in this study is the sunlight. We have here the controlled setup and the experimental setup. So as you can see, the effect of sunlight for both setup has to do something with the intensity of light. Or we have here the exposure of the sunlight. And we have here the bar dependent variable is the plant growth, which you can observe with the controlled and experimental setup. Speaking of dependent variable, Dependent variables are those that depend on the independent variables. They are the outcomes or result of the influence of the independent variables. That is why it is called as outcome variables. So the same example, we have here a study on the relationship of the study habits and academic performance of ICNHS senior high school students. The academic performance now is the dependent variable because it is depending on the study habits of the students. If the students change their study habit, the academic performance also will change. So the same with this experiment, does the sunlight affect the plant or growth? The dependent variable is the plant growth. In a controlled setup, as you can see, maybe in this case, we have a limited sunlight exposure. While here in experimental setup, it has a good sunlight exposure. As you can see, there is a dependent variable, which is the plant growth. Let's proceed to the intervening or meddling variables. Variables that can stand between the independent and dependent variables. And they show the effects of the independent variables on the dependent variables. So for an example, even the farm production is good, if the attitude towards the payment is negative, loan repayment would be low. Whereas, if the attitude towards repayment is positive of favorable, loan repayment would be high. As you can see here, farm production it says that even though if you have a good farm production or good ani, maganda yung ani ng yung, um, farm, if you have an attitude towards the payment of the loan, it can also affect to the loan repayment. So in this case, as you can see, the center, that is an example of an intervening variables. As you can see here in experiment, as you can see, we have here intervening variable. It's for example, you can give in experimental setup a fertilizer. This fertilizer can be your intervening variable can affect with your the dependent variable lastly we have the control variables a special types of independent variables that are measured in the study because they potentially influence the dependent variables research use statistics procedure to control these variables they may be demographic or personal variables that need to be controlled so that the true influence of the dependent variable on the dependent variable can be determined as you can see in this experiment, you can see that the control variable are the plants, soil, pot, and water. If you're going to use this as a controlled variable, you make sure, for example, plant, you use the same variety of plant in controlled setup and experimental setup, or else it will become your independent variable. We have also the soil. You need to make sure that you use the same amount of soil and the same quantity and quality of the soil so to make it a controlled variable so we have here also the fat you need to make sure that you use the same size of fat from the controlled variable and the experimental variable or else 
it will affect your resulting data or the dependent variable or outcome. And lastly, we have here the water. Make sure that you give the same amount of water from both experiments. I think that's all. Thank you for listening. Bye!